Hello, I'm Trudy Friend. In the last programme I did with you, I showed you the counter change and how I can put dark against light and light against dark in my initial underpainting. Now I want to show you the next stage. Now the greens are in place, I want to start adding the colour for the flowers. I think I might choose a dilute alizarin for a few pink blooms. So if I mix that up with plenty of water and just touch it against the paper so that I don't go too dark too soon. And I'm now going to look at the little areas where I have suggested that I would like some blooms and there's one there. This is put on with a crisscross application too and I can, once I've put it on, just blot off gently, which is giving me the palest undertone for these flowers. So we've got a, a few reds up here. And again, just blot gently. I've got to consider the arrangement of these blooms so that it's in an attractive way and they're not all lined up too much. I think another one down there will help that arrangement. And I've actually got space for another one here because what I'm aiming to do really is put this colour on pure paper. I don't really want it to touch over the green in a large area. If it touches slightly that doesn't matter of course, it just increases the tone. But really we're looking to see these flowers build up on the white surface. I'm just looking now and seeing that I could put a little dot there and a little dot there and start getting a little bit of the drop-in effect where other leaves are crossing over part of the flower. Um, another little one there would be quite nice behind some of the leaves and perhaps another one there. And then we're feeling our way through the composition with these blooms. And of course, we're not going to see the whole of a flower all the time. Sometimes it may stand forward from the leaves and we see the whole flower. Other times leaves are crossing it. So we want these uneven shapes and the interest of them. Perhaps here I've got a space for another one there and there. I'm not sure how much red to put over there and I might introduce some blue flowers. So I think I'll stop there for the moment. If I look over to the other plant, that's where I might put some blue in. So I'm getting a little bit of ultramarine and just I've got some space here for some blue areas and then just reduce them down so that they're just in place there. Now I'm going to work up on the greens a little bit more. So into the green, remember the two colours I mixed together at first were Viridian and the Burnt Umber and that was to get a subtle green. I'm going to put a bit of tone here and crisscross out. Almost a flat wash area there, but I do it gently so that I can see how the shapes are coming, whether I like them, whether I need to extend them. So crisscross area there and I'm in with a strong negative. Another strong negative over here and I've got a support there so that you're seeing some sort of trailing stem or something supporting it. Another negative there. And I'm going up to and away from these stems. So it's up to the stem and away, up to the stem and away. And here I can see a leaf coming down, so I have that as a leaf, dark behind there. And some negatives here. I could have a leaf shape there. There's a, a negative over there. So as I've got the undercoat down and everything in place, I can dance about a bit and put in the negatives and sit back and see that they're not too regular and that I've got some interesting shapes. So I could work up with some negatives there, taking the eye up to this area and cutting in a little, crisscrossing. And I'd like now to consider some of the extremities so that I can see the dark counterchange of the leaves against the light background. So I'm going to have the effect of a fern type coming up over here. Negative in there. Another fern perhaps trailing out this way. 
dark in here and out again. And I have regard for the shape that's going to be between these as well. I might introduce another one up there later or let that extend. I'm not going to rush into it because I can always add them once I've decided how the composition is proceeding. So I have another one down here and crisscross in. That could be quite a large leaf coming out there, a bit of shape to it. And another leaf there with a, an area behind. So even though I put in a little bit of blue behind just to help the colour there, I'm still going to end up with the dark shapes against that blue. And now these leaf shapes are going in. And I'll take this shape into the composition more with that flower head there, another one there. And a little bit of a crisscross down here where we get the trailing area of greenery. You may notice that I sometimes turn the brush as I would with a pencil. My reason for that is once I've painted a stroke, I have actually changed the shape of the brush or the hairs on it and I need sometimes to turn it so that I'm not going to end up with a wider stroke than I intended. So always keep an eye on the shape of your brush. I'll have a dark in there I think so that, that can be a leaf overhanging. And a dark recess there. And over here. Here I can think about any shadows cast by that plant. So I could add, if I wished, a darker side to this and not have too much light coming into it. Just the odd glimmer of light perhaps coming through. Crisscrossing down. And these would also be dark here. And now I'm coming onto the dark side of this pot plant. Dancing on my toes a little bit here in order to get some interesting edges. And dancing on my toes means I'm only using the very tip of that brush and I'm coming in different directions to try and get some interesting strokes. And going round these blues. I think I might do a glaze now. I quite often put a glaze on at the end. But if I glaze now, you'll get an idea of the way that can change down the light side. So I'm going to just add a little bit of green to a lemon yellow and very gently pull and crisscross on the light side and glaze over some of the existing greens. And this is done directionally so that I'm allowing some of the paper to show through. It's a very dilute lemon yellow and down onto that side and down those. And that lightens up the side. 